Hey everybody, this is JT Movie, and I'm the animator of Omega, unfortunately. Today we're going to be looking at a color technique, sort of a faster way to color your animations. So before you start off here, you're of course going to have to have an animation. In my case, I would usually have thousands of frames lined up. You can use this for any number of frames, any little number, any big number. It works the same way, but basically when you have a lot of frames lined up that you got to color, it's time inducing, so you want to cut that down as fast as possible. So first what you want to do is select all your frames, copy them, create a new graphic, and paste them inside. Again, this could be anywhere from one frame to a thousand frames. Next what you want to do is edit multiple frames, and then push Control A to select all your frames, and then you're going to push Control G to turn all the frames into groups. Then you're going to create a new layer, put it on the bottom, and call it Color. Make sure you delete the line around this color, it's going to be important later. Okay, so now you basically, it looks like this entire character is blue. He has a whole background that's blue, but that doesn't necessarily mean he is colored yet. And of course, you don't want this box around this animation. So next we're going to do, we're going to go back to our main timeline, we're going to create a new layer, and then we're going to paste this graphic on top of it. Then we're going to switch the options to play once. We don't want this animation to loop, we just want it to go one time. You can delete your bottom layer, your old animation, you don't need that anymore. And then you're going to convert all these frames to keyframes. Then we're going to edit multiple frames again, select all the frames with Control A, and then we're going to push Control B to break everything apart. You're going to have to do it twice, one for the graphic itself and then for the group layer you just made with your animation. We're going to select all the frames again, and then we're going to delete all the blue colors so there's not like this big blue background. Two reasons why you do this. One, sometimes when you color, there's little gaps that you don't see, and those can be blank. This way, everything is colored. Now, if something isn't colored, it's going to be obvious. If there's no color in a certain spot, you have to recolor it, and that shows you there was a gap in that animation. So I have a couple here I just need to touch up. Also, what you want to watch out for are these little pockets where there shouldn't be any color there, but it accidentally colors because you make sort of this shape around his arm and his elbow and his torso. Okay, so now everything's colored blue. It's basically like you had this animation here the whole time and you just sat there and colored it one color, essentially. And then I have a new window here where I have basically my character that I'm drawing here, and I have preset colors and I have his character body so when I go through the colors I can know exactly where the colors need to go and what colors I need. So I'm going to select this, I'm going to copy all these, and I'm going to move it back here, and then I'm going to convert these color swatches to a group. So that's if I happen to change all the colors for the thing I'm not changing these colors. These colors will be completely protected if I change all the colors. So now I know his main color is that his jacket. His jacket is brown. So what I like to do, whatever the main color is, something that's probably going to be the most I'm going to have to color, I change the entire frames to that color. So then I just have to do the little colors. So he has skin, he has a shirt, he has pants, he has hair. His jacket is the main thing. His jacket is the big thing. So I change everything to brown, which is the color of his jacket, and then the rest is just coloring. Go through it as you would expect. For the heads themselves, I usually don't color the heads. I have pre-made heads that I just paste in, so I'm not coloring the headlines, etc. But for the bodies themselves, I always do this every single time. This is the fastest way to color, I think. Gives you complete control, allows to make sure that everything is colored, there's no gaps, nothing like that, because there can be problems when you're working with lines like this. It's better to put your pre-made color swatches on another layer, so as you're going through the frames, they just remain there. They don't. You don't have to copy them within every frame, and you can just get the color and paste it onto the character. And that's essentially it. Once it's done, there you go. Um, yeah, coloring takes a long time, but any shortcuts is useful, and I think this is one of the only shortcuts I know is possible when coloring. Thanks for watching. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash jtmovie. I have some updates from the episode. And yeah, if you're interested in supporting it, please check it out. Thanks for watching.